Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penning, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to drive cart. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve to lay down. Training Eve to harness, pull a log. Training Semi to harness, pull a log on turf. Liberty jumping to music with our horses who are our partners. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Training on our driveway, which is covered by sand, so we have a straight track. Stepping over poles, jumping over crossbar jumps. Training in our trail obstacles course. Sadie doing obstacles without Rain control. Training miniature zebu bowl rusty to pull and implement. Working with Sadie at home after SCCHA prep and before the schooling show. We've had a couple of sessions where we were practicing to desensitize our horses to the bigness and the differentness of it. Um, and yesterday when we were there with Sadie, my three-year-old, we realized that in fact she needed a little work on collection. So when Alexis got here to Minmore Farms today, I decided to ask uh, Alexis to work with Sadie on uh, maybe getting a little more collection so that when we take her on Saturday... Um, we maybe will see less resistance in her mouth, smaller stride, um, more vertical flexion. So I think, we're, and we'll confirm this with Rosie uh, Saturday when we go back to SCCHA, but um, I think what she was saying is I couldn't get her to slow down and short stride. Okay. And then at the same time, a collected horse very often looks vertically flexed. Now, can a collected horse have their head out? What do you uh, mean out? Out, not vertical. <laughs> you know, fall. Well, I, I don't know. I see it for. I think that you know. A, a lot of times, I see horses who are really like overcorrected, who are really, like broken. You know, right, right up here. Yes. This vertebrae, and they're just like like really cranked down. And I think that that's not good. <laughs> it's almost it's yeah, almost dangerous good. to have a horse too vertically flexed. In other words, if their nose is so vertical that it's actually in towards their breast, right. then you can lose control, I've been told. Right. But so yes, yeah, so we I, I mean I think collection is vertical. I mean I don't know. You are you asking if they can be kind of poked out while they're Yes. Collected? Yes. I, I don't Maybe not like true collection. I don't. Think yeah, I think that. maybe they I would become so. more hollow in the back yeah. if their head was out. Right. Yeah, so exactly. yeah, collection is all those things. But what it results in is softness, lightness, and slowness when mm -hmm. you're asking for it. So that's what we'll do today. We'll just introduce Sadie and ourselves to uh, to you know the the cues we're going to use yeah. to get Sadie to work off her haunches in a collected manner, in other words, her yeah. back isn't going to be hollow, which is a dressage term almost, uh -huh, and uh, yeah, and her head is going to be vertical, but not too vertical, and we want uh, no stress, so no stiffness, uh, we want the gold standard, yeah. and so, we're working towards it. I think, like, see, when I've been riding her recently, I haven't worried about her head at all. I, I mean, I've, because I'm, I'm concentrating on here, and I'm concentrating on flexion, so I feel like collection is a little more... I mean, I don't really want to take her there yet as far as, like, the elevation. I don't think that she has the muscle to do that yet as far as 
like coming through and as far as being able to hold yourself and really carry that. So what I was working on today when I was warming up is asking for this inside hind leg a lot more of like striding through yes. there. And I think that that and also suppleness um, is maybe the foundation that I'd like to start with. Okay. All right. Do you feel like we could maybe even try some fencing stops today know, with that her? Is. That's where I've seen Western uh, trainers do it. Um, in order to teach a horse to stop on their haunches uh -huh. rather than to stop on their front end, they'll they'll uh, first uh, do a jog toward a fence. Mm -hmm. And just before they get to the fence, they'll ask by sitting back on their pockets, bringing their feet slightly forward in the stirrups, and maybe a, a little bit of bumping on the reins uh -huh. for a whoa, uh -huh. with the word whoa, uh -huh. um, that will be a haunches stop. Rather than a one rein stop, rather than a stop where there's a jolt on the front end. Okay. The fence in front of them helps them to realize that they need to do it more with their back end. Okay. Okay. Now, one problem I've found myself with fencing is the horse gets kind of uh, wise <laughs> to the fact that you're going to yeah. about to stop them because they see the fence. Yeah. And then they won't go all the way up to the fence. So it's critical. The timing you is critical. You want, yes, you, you push them up until you're ready to ask for that woe. And then they're going to immediately uh, work off their haunches with a beautiful haunches well we hope and we may even step a step back or two okay, okay. let's if you uh, want to try that sure. yeah i've never done that before but. yeah but now as you work with her uh -huh. um i know i've had uh, questions posed to me already since my interview uh, across the country yeah. people that would like to be able to do these things and don't work with a professional trainer so i tell them well this is the way I perceive it. This is what you're yeah. aiming for. Um, watch my shows and ask me questions about my shows. And I'll definitely, the, uh, an email that I got yesterday, definitely refer her to this show when it's up on the Urban Cowgirl channel because this is what I was trying to tell her with words on an email. I'd rather just show her what I was trying to say and see if it works. Oh, the, the stopping you mean? Yeah, okay. the fencing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah okay. Okay. So, so should I start with you? Yeah, what just uh, what you were saying, yes. Like okay. and, and tell us when you're trying to get that back leg forward, okay. like you said. And you know, one thing I want to mention, too, is I'll probably be doing this in a trot. And timing is really critical with your leg, like we're, when you're cueing. So if I'm posting, I'm coming up when this leg is driving through. So that, first of all, you know, takes my weight off so she can push through a little more. And also, when I, as I come up, I'll tickle her with the spur. Which will even more encourage that. Okay, great. So that's great. That's how I'm asking Good. for it. Good. Yeah. So as you do it, tell us if uh, what you think you're trying to do is getting done. Okay. Without resistance. So that's a little nicer right there. And I think what's happening too is she needs to learn that, you know, like I was mentioning before about falling in, that she needs to really hold, hold her own self up. <clears throat> yeah, one of the questions I got was shoulder in. And I replied by saying, you know, I'm not a dressage person. I'm not sure if you're trying to get a shoulder in or if you're trying to keep your shoulders up and straight. And well, uh, there's, okay, the thing is, I think in dressage is it's not that the shoulder is, like, falling in, but it's that, um, so if you're on a curve, or if you're on a straight line, if you're walking in a straight line, the shoulder is going to be slightly in, but still moving forward. So they're still balanced. They're still holding themselves up. It's just, it's a lateral movement, or a flexion. Okay, but not a bulging of the shoulder. Right. Yeah, it's right. not like a... An off balance kind of thing. Okay, a great clarification. Yeah. Good. We're we're all trying to teach each other. None of us are professional trainers. We've all come from different walks of the horsey life. 
Uh, we're dealing with uh, wonderfully willing Morgan horses who have a lot to learn. And so we're uh, showing you how we're dealing with it and how we're learning to become partners with each other. This is Sadie, my three-year-old. I've been working with her, well, on the ground since she was just a few months old, but actually had her saddled up, I'd say, uh, oh, over a year ago. for a moment because the mic fell off Sorry. but uh, and it's really helpful to us to hear what the writer's saying so okay. let's make sure okay good let's make sure we can hear what Alexis is telling us because sometimes it's not so obvious especially to the untrained eye uh, for example when that rear leg is coming forward and when Alexis is posting and when is Sadie it seems to be shortening her stride in the effort to get collection. But if our rider can tell us at the time she's riding. If, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, if I'm not posting, what I'm going to be doing is like really trying to use my own hips and following the, like using the motion of her her hind end to like push, kind of push her forward, like really driving with my own hips, you know? Great. That's body language cues. That's really what we want to use. Some voice, somebody, as little hand as possible, as little rein as possible. And isn't that what dressage is all about? You very seldom even see the cues, but the horses do ballerina work. We still have our barrel-like objects here that we were practicing with uh, a few days ago for the maybe the barrel race that we're going to play with uh, this Saturday at the schooling show. And and Alexis, if we do do the keyhole, have you ever done a keyhole race? No, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> yeah, it's a keyhole uh, with chalk on the on the sand in the arena. Uh -huh. And uh, by time, you know, you're, it's your turn. You um, go as fast as you can into the keyhole, turn around in the wide circle of the end of the keyhole, just like a keyhole looks, oh, and, then and then come back out without touching the chalk. So what is it, a spin? It, it's, a, it's a spin on the haunches, yes. That's the fastest way to turn around and come back out in a straight line. So we can pretend when we're doing the fencing here that as soon as you've got that haunches stop, Turn around and go back to the other fence. In a 180? Still yeah, playing. yeah, let's see if we can get that, because that's what it's all about. Otherwise, it's going to take longer to turn around in the hole of the keyhole. You want me to do this, try and do those stops? So uh, I do. Okay. And you know, I have chalk. I'm going to stop the camera for a minute. I'm going to make you a keyhole. <laughs> you just work on right. fencing. Okay, we've made a keyhole, a rather generous keyhole, in the middle of this arena. Just to get our horses used to it, we'll try to do it with Semi tomorrow. We're going to have Alexis first walk in there. Alexis, show her what the boundary is of that path. I wonder if she can see it. Might, she might not. It might be totally up to you to explain to her what her task is. There you go. You stop. Now, if you have to walk around, you know, that's not against the rules. It's just that you won't be very competitive. There you go. And here's the hard part. Once you get around, if you haven't come all the way around, you're going to touch those chalk lines on the way out. Uh-huh. All right. Um, try it at a jog. Okay. And uh, do some fencing if you feel you need to get that uh, woe on the haunches. And whoa. 
we'll see if we want to try this when we go to SCCHA this weekend. It's one thing to do it here, another thing to do it there. Yes. All right, let's see if she'll go around. Nice, nice, nice. And then you go as fast as you can out without touching. Yeah. So, right, yeah. Are you going to get the woe in time for her not to touch the line oh. at the end of the keyhole? Yes, the fencing really helps to get that haunches stop. Yes. couple steps back. Now, Bob Avila says that he uses the word hoe. Only for hoe and nothing else. And absolutely every single time he stops, he steps up. She a listens step back. to that real good. To vocal, to voice yes, commands. Good. Oh. A little Careful. bit of a trip. Good, yes. All right. Good, yes. I like the way she's backing too. All I'm right. Stumble. Yeah, that's, you know, that helped. I mean, that happens, especially with youngsters who maybe don't always pay attention where their feet are. That's why we work over poles, work over cavalettis. Those are good exercises. All right, now let's see if Alexis wants to try the keyhole again. And you look ahead of yourself, not at your horse, but ahead of yourself. That helps. Oh. And you see how a reigning horse probably will win this yeah. event. <laughs> we're working on. Okay. All right, we're working on reigning, but reigning is uh, high school, high school keyholes. Now I'm sure. Um, well, I anticipate we'll see uh, horses canter into the oh. keyhole, come to yeah. a high end hole, spin around, and canter out. I, we probably don't even want to try that today. No, we're not ready. Maybe we'll do it at a, at a trot when we go there. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're doing it mostly for the development. Yeah. Not for the the competition, so to speak. We want to give our horses the opportunity to develop. Yeah. I like to keep it a little... I, I don't know. What do you What do you have in mind for the for going there? Like, do you want us to be competitive? No. Okay. Good. Absolutely not. That's, That's not good. the point of this... Not yeah. this year, anyway. Okay. We just are developing our horses. We're getting them used to being away from home. And um, if we have some fun doing it, that would be great. Yeah. And some fun doing it with people that are there to do it. So there's maybe going to be a camaraderie. One of the people that emailed me was worried about, quote, messing up her horse. And uh -huh. I said, you know, if you do it in small steps and always back up and quit on a good note with something they can do, you're not likely to mess up your horse. But you have to do it in small steps and patiently and with a plan. I think, yeah, it's really important to be aware of yourself, I think, like, what, like all the time because I think you're always training them like even you know people say well yeah I'm not a trainer but you're you know, you're always training your horse you know Absolutely. everything you do yes it's training one way or another you know whether it's good or not so and I email I emailed her back because she has two horses you know and I have three and I said I wake up in the morning I think about what we did last time and you know what the weather's like today and who's coming and what we have time for and mm -hmm. then I make the plan Mm -hmm. You know, in small steps. Yeah. It's kind of like being a math teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to learn how to do something complicated like uh, factoring a trinomial without some practice right. in small steps. I don't know if you're interested in seeing what else I've been working, the lateral work I've been working oh, on. Oh, I'd love to. Okay, so I've been doing some dressage moves with the, if there's a pole there. Can I come up yes. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, she's been real good about it. Yes, yeah. beautiful. She learned it real quick. And that, this would be, you know, and then once we get collection, asking for these kind of movements in collection is. 
Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, that is like yielding, I believe. Now, what about the other one where you arc the neck the other way? And Side pass? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, that's <laughs> the hard harder. one. I've seen Dennis Reese do it, and I was very, very impressed. Yeah. And he also said, though, it's much harder. Yeah. I think we'd leave that for another day. <laughs> okay. Our show, our uh, Urban Cowgirl channel, emphasizes ranch horse versatility uh, uh, and dressage movements um, are an art, and they can be helpful here, but they're not our main objective. I think it's not the like the for me it's not the movement itself. Like it's having your horse like listen to you well enough is what's really the goal for me. Like doing that and and understanding how to get them to move the body parts that you're trying to move. Right, in exactly. Direction. Being able, yeah, you know, being able to move individual parts of the horse's body. Uh, separating like the hind end from the front end is really kind of cool. Some uh, trainers say there's five body parts. Uh, really? Some trainers say there's three. You what know, are the five? <laughs> the five, if I can recall, is uh, the pole, uh -huh. um, the neck, um, the shoulders, the ribs, and uh, the hips. <laughs> is that five? Pole, neck, shoulders, ribs, and hip. I think those are the five body parts, but that's kind of a little bit too fine for me. Uh -huh. uh, if I can think of being able to move the front end, being able to move the end under the, you know, the middle, under the saddle, and being able to move the hind end, uh, I feel like that's uh, versatile and useful enough to me. Oh. But which way do you arc, for example, the neck, and then which way do you move the body? See, and that's why in dressage, you know, I believe it becomes important. Yeah. You know, which way you're moving the body at the same time, which way the neck is being arced. Now, if there's a use to that, I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> you know, but right now, I'm kind of in the foundation work of let's be ranch horse versatile. Let's be willing. Let's build communication. Let's be partners. She's also turning really good, like, should really follow your head, so if you look where you're going. I have a little outside spur on her, too, but, but this way she's a lot better. Because she used to be hard to the left. I, really, I think her left is better for me right now. Good. Well, then we're uh, making some progress in that respect with that yeah. problem. Now, uh, one of the emails I got uh, questioned how to keep a horse uh, steady at whatever uh, stride you're Good. asking for. It, in other words, when she tried to transition to the next speed up, she got a bolt rather than a steady transition. Oh. Do you uh, have any comments on that, Alexis? We all want to try to help each other. What's your feeling about that? So uh, the horse speeds up in upward transitions? Or? Yeah, speed, yeah. Instead of, instead of, let's say, going from a slow jog to a, a nice slope, um, I, I, what I gathered from her question, and it's hard because all she was using is words rather than pictures for me. She didn't send me a video or anything. She said that the horse would would uh, wouldn't do it smoothly and what i think she wanted was a slow jog into a slow lope yeah. for example instead she got a slow jog a fast trot yeah and then maybe a fast lope you, yeah you know my horse at home that i grew up riding she she used to be like that too um and i think what really helped i think the reason she was like that is the balance in the transitions as the, as the transition happens they lose their balance and that makes them a little anxious and so they speed up I think that's, I mean, specifically my horse, I think that's what happened. So maybe, maybe. Uh, what did you do to improve the balance? What do you do? <laughs> what did you do? Um, let's see. I guess a lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of practice in transitions. You know, I don't know if the horse is balanced already, like, you know, it going just regular, just, you know, going in a straight line. But that'd be a place to start, you know, tr serpentines and kind of like I was explaining before, like if they're falling and holding them up with the inside leg. Yes, can you, you know, explain that again? Because I was just going to suggest that. Explain that, that, that again? bulging shoulder can be a real problem. So there's kind of two ways that they that I've found that she goes, and Eve especially. Um, either they're going to be kind of falling, like really falling in on this inside shoulder, or they're going to be 
kind of leaking out of the outside shoulder uh, if you're on a circle. So, or I guess I'll wear a straight line. So what do you do? Um, I guess if she's falling in, what I do is I'd sit to the outside, first of all, so kind of throw that balance this way. And I'd kind of try, like this is just from what my dressage teacher was teaching me, so trying letting, letting this calf slide down and you're kind of holding him with your whole cat, whole leg, you know? And at the same time, pick, picking him up with the inside leg. So every time they fall, you just pick them up. And you just can't, the more, you know, repeat, 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 and they finally start. Okay, you know. can you explain what you mean by picking them up with your inside leg? Um, I guess pressure, a little bit of pressure, and then for me it's a lot of like this kind of motion with the spur. Like I don't usually you know poke them or anything, but I'm just kind of like tickling, lifting them up, uh -huh. just like uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. And so that kind of rubbing, kind of um, I don't know. I feel like has found. Has Okay, I've heard uh, trainers uh, use the terms open and close the door. Uh, uh, and you've never heard that. It almost seems like you were, um, your door was closed on both sides the way you just described. Mm. Right? Because you were using leg pressure on both sides, but in different directions. Okay. Right? I see. Yeah, you were kind of, you, your, your right leg, you said, was kind of holding them, and your, uh, your left leg was kind of picking them up. To get them balanced, would would that help to maybe explain to somebody what you what you are saying? Yeah. So, so you're saying both doors are closed? Yes, <laughs> yes. In that moment, right? Is there at is, the same time though? I don't want to, you know, it's maybe it's more of just a leaning, more of a weight shift to the side. Okay. Than it is. Okay. Would you say then that you're opening the door while you're leaning with that yeah. right leg? Oh, okay. So the open door. I'd say yes. Yeah. Uh, a concept is not, yeah, useful I, here. That's interesting. I've never heard that. But um, definitely leaning this way would encourage them to go that way. So I assume that's what opening the door means. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. You give them a, a way out. But at the same time, I think what I mean with this leg is that I don't want the other the other thing I was talking about is, you know, moving through the outside shoulder. You yes. know, kind of leaking out. Yes. I think that's what I mean. Like, this leg is kind of preventing that. Yes. You know, before it, before it happens. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maybe. Okay. I think. All right. <laughs> well, okay. I'm so excited about this show. I'm going to upload it as fast as I can okay. and let the most recent emailer uh, who asked these questions uh, know that it's up there. Cool. And um, we'll see if she uh, can give us some feedback because I've yeah. asked these people to please keep in touch with me. That would be really fun to have feedback. Yes. I'd really like it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Great. Shadrach Stables at Midmore Farms. Sadie and E. Sammy. Rusty and Susie. Triple W. The